I want to tell you about the Polish transition in 1989 and how it relates to the Arab transitions, what we hope are the Arab democratic transitions of 2011 and what came out of them. Uh, but I want to begin by asking a question. Does anyone know a case in history where a prime minister of a country fainted or collapsed due to fatigue uh, in the parliament because, of, because he was overworked, because he was such a hard-working person. I imagine you cannot find such an example, but in our history, in the modern Polish history, we do have such an example, and that was Tadeusz Mazowiecki, the first democratic prime minister of Poland, who fainted in the parliament in 1989 uh, because he was working so hard. And, uh, uh, I think that the Polish transition is a success story that should uh, and needs to be researched and know uh, more of uh, so that the Arab countries can benefit from it. Uh, it's a sort of a large idea uh, to make comparisons between two transitions. Uh, there is a huge time span between them, more than 20 years. But still, the Polish example, the Central European example, is time-wise closest to the Arab transitions, and this is not uh, uh, an unimportant factor uh, in a fast-changing world, so this is one. There are similarities between initial conditions, both in the Arab world and in Poland. Uh, there was economic hardship in Poland, there is economic hardship in the Arab world. Uh, Arab society is very religious, and so was, and still is, uh, the Polish society. Uh, and of course, having said that, there are many differences, because the two countries are in different uh, cultural, civilizational circles, but still, what there is, the linkage that there is between the two examples, uh, is the need to reform institutions. And institutions in democratic systems more or less work similarly. Um, in this case, the Polish transition was very successful and it, it is still going on uh, and it took relatively short time span. From 1989 to late 90s, it may be still going on but the bulk of it happened in the 90s. Uh, we went from zero to hero. Uh, so. If, you, if I were to give you a couple of numbers, uh, the Polish GDP per capita in 1989, 1990, was 30% of Western European average. It is now 60% of Western European average. Uh, Poles asked in 1991 how satisfied with their lives they were. Uh, they would set 20, only 20% 20 of them would say that they were satisfied with their lives. Whereas today, more than 80% of Poles are saying that they are satisfied with their lives. So this is the kind of progress uh, that is impressive and sort of miraculous if you look at the, at the details. Um, now, I don't want to boast about my own country. I am in... in, in one respect sort of a product of this Polish transition uh, but it's a it's a process and a kind of victory and revolution without sparks without glitter of, of the victory and without blood because it was a peaceful revolution um, that is often overlooked whereas it took the right people at the right time hard-working people like Fadel Czmazowiecki of whom I, I told you about uh, and it took incentives from outside, from the European Union, uh, from the rest of the world, to embrace Poland in, in this new setting. So these two factors, I would say, if you need the bottom line of it, are necessary also uh, in the Arab world. And hence, uh, I would suggest that we begin uh, by exploring the the specificity of the Polish transition and try to compare it or put it over the Arab transitions today.